Okay, let's have a look at investment in biotechnological uh, biotechnology industry. Now, first of all, uh, I would like to tell you that uh, biotech companies, they are not only medical biotech companies. There are a few of them. So, for example, Agra Biotech, uh, these companies will be uh, focused on developing certain uh, like Agra products. Then you will see technological. So, and also, so we're going to cover today only medical biotechnology. And uh, is the use of living cells and cell materials to research and produce pharmaceutical and di diagnostic products that help treat and prevent human diseases. Now, we need to know certain things about biotechnological uh, biotechnology industry, which is different from any other industry. And you have to always remember when you invest in this particular industry. Now, first of all, you have to understand that it takes 12 to 15 years to develop and approve the drug. So if we take any other uh, industry, for example, we looked at our club meeting at retail industry. Imagine that uh, something happened with the product. Like remember, we looked at lumber liquidator and uh, their product uh, didn't pass the quality test. So what they did, they just removed it from the shelves and replaced by another product. So it's pretty straightforward and pretty easy to do. Whereas here, we need to understand that if it takes 12 to 15 years to develop the drug and approve it, so if something happened with that particular drug, you cannot easily replace it. You have to spend another 10 uh, to 15 years uh, and a lot of money as well, up to $800 million to do that. So, And uh, if the drug was discontinued or drug was uh, like, you know, so whatever problem was found with that drug, a company can suffer a lot. So you have to understand that when you invest in this particular industry. Now, I know there are a lot of people who invest in uh, startups. And uh, I know Australian government is uh, promoting this type of investment that it has a lot of potential and it's true. But at the same time, when the new product is being developed, there is no guarantee that the drug will be approved by uh, FDA so for production. So it might happen the situation that company will spend $800 million, 12, 15 years, and then the drug wouldn't be approved. So can you imagine that if there is only one drug in pipeline, the company will go bankrupt straight away? Why? Because uh, they don't have any uh, possibility, any product to sell, etc., etc. So you have to uh, know that as well. So there is no guarantee that the product, which is not approved yet, is going to be approved. The next thing which you have to take into consideration is uh, if the product was approved, uh, the company has a patent and this patent will protect this company or this particular product from the competitors, generic drug competitors, up to 10 to 25 years. And it will depend on the type of the drug and also it will depend on the uh, country where this drug is sold. Now, in some countries, you can find protection only valid for 10 days in, or 10 years, and in some uh, countries, it would be up to 25 years. Now, another thing which is also important to consider here is that sometimes when the company uh, got approved in, for example, in United States, it doesn't mean that they can sell their product in different countries. So they will have to get uh, another approval in, uh, for example, in Europe. And it's not always possible to sell the drug which is uh, on a sale already in, uh, for example, in United States. So it's not that easy to expand geographically. So you have to take into consideration. So for example, if you invest in certain company, uh, for example, retail, as, as I mentioned before, and this company uh, decided to move to Europe. So it's pretty straightforward. They have to op open the uh, pilot shop or pilot office and then start dealing with it. That's it. Whereas with biotech companies, uh, it's much more difficult. And you have to understand that. So the growth rate is uh, like the growth is more difficult in this particular industry. Okay. 
uh, that's how the proce process is done so also you need to understand that in order to uh, kind of uh, will go through uh, the company you will see that sometimes the earnings the profit of the company might move up or down uh, based on at what stage uh, of development the drug or drugs uh, at the moment in this particular company. So as we can see that basic research first, we don't know how many years it might take, then um, drug discovery, the, uh, like preclinical testing, then phase one, two, three, and then FDA review up to two years. And only after that, when the drug is approved, we can market and uh, sell this product. Now, the interesting thing about it that the maximum spending, so when the company is just starting uh, researching the drug, so it might be only 10 people involved in this particular company, okay? But the closer it comes to uh, FDA review, the more people involved in that particular business and the more money company has to put in this particular testing stage so if we see in the phase one we have only 20 to 100 volunteers so in phase three it might go to 5000 people who are going to go through this testing so you understand that it involves much more doctors uh, like testing subjects etc etc so of course money which is spent in a phase three uh, are much higher than in phase one. So you need to understand that. So uh, when I was talking about $800 million of spending up to $800 million, it could be a bit more, it could be much less. Uh, it depends on the product. But remember that the highest spending probably will go at the end of the development stage. Okay. Now, when we are choosing the company to invest, now, we already looked at our educational program, uh, what criteria you have to take into consideration. Now, when you invest in biotech companies, you have to look at uh, more criteria. Okay, First of all, try to invest in large capitalization companies, which are above $5 billion. Why? As I explained to you, if the company uh, is a startup and has only one product, so if something happened to that particular product, the company most likely will go bankrupt. So, And uh, if you put the money into that particular company, you might lose everything. So like, I mean, whatever you invested in this. So that's why when you invest in bigger companies with capitalization above 5 billion, so most likely they have several drugs already developed and they're selling several drugs. And of course, your risks are much lower in this particular case. So trying to do that. Now, another thing is no debt. So when we looked at uh, uh, our like uh, companies previously and the quality companies, and we were saying that up to 30% of debt, it's quite normal. When you invest in biotech companies, try to find companies which have no debt. Now, and also try to find companies which have a positive uh, cash flow or if they don't have positive cash flow like maybe negative or neutral try to find uh, companies with availability of cash for the next 12 to 18 months now why do you need it because if the company has certain companies uh, certain products in their pop pipeline they might uh, need this money this money in order to complete their uh, like I mean development uh, process okay it's first of all but secondly if one uh, product was discontinued for whatever reason and uh, their cash flow was affected we need to be sure that the company will survive for the next 12 to 18 months until like the moment when the next product which is probably in a pipeline uh, is going to be approved now uh, also, we try to find the companies which work in the top therapeutic categories now and have a variety of different product range. So try to find companies which deal with the 
dangerous diseases i mean diseases where people die okay it could be cardiovascular disease uh, diseases of central nervous system uh, autoimmune diseases cancer aids diabetes immunological disease infectious disease respiratory disease and so on now why do we uh, prefer companies which work in top therapeutic categories because uh, most likely if this problem exists on the market um, like of course it's no guarantee as i said if that fda will approve it but most likely will they will try to approve this drug uh, in a faster pace it uh, could be one reason second reason that uh, this particular drug you can charge more money for that now you probably understand that some of uh, the drugs for this particular uh, UTHR, uh, when we look at the price of the treatment for one year would be $90,000. Now, I presume you're going to pay this amount of money only if it is light, light threatening disease and you're going to, to die if you don't treat yourself. So that's when you're going to spend so much money in order to uh, buy this particular drug. Now, if it is some kind of problem, which, for example, hair problem or skin problem, condition which can last for years and years and you can live all your life and maybe it doesn't affect your uh, kind of life, it doesn't threaten your life, so most likely you're not going to pay $90,000 for this particular drug. So that's why when we invest in the companies which have uh, products in this high therapeutic ca categories, uh, most likely they have higher margin. And higher margin for us as investors, it's, uh, it gives us higher profit. So, okay. Now, another uh, point you have to take in, into consideration is robust pop pipeline. So it means that we have several products in different development stages. So maybe it's uh, some products are just been in a laboratory stage, some of them in stage one, two, three, etc., etc. Uh, it's good to know that when you invest in a company that uh, from now on continuously, this company is going to introduce new products next year, year after that, and maybe after that, after that, and after that. Okay, so it is uh, good to know that. Now, uh, another uh, good thing if you know that few products already under review and the closer to FDA approval stage the better and when you invest in uh, biotech companies you need to know uh, when this date of uh, like results going to come because in this particular day uh, you you will see the company will move up or down uh, quite a lot and uh, in my practice I've seen uh, in one day company moved 300 percent so it's like tripled in price after FDA approved uh, the drug okay so you have to know that now another thing which you, which you need to take into consideration is the uh, legal issues now legal issues with uh, this type of companies could be with government for example some companies at the moment they are fighting uh, for their price levels where government is trying to reduce these prices to make it more affordable to like general population okay it could be competitors when the competitors trying to introduce the drug which is very very similar and uh, maybe uh, you consider it like uh, to be stolen and uh, like breach of patents and etc etc so uh, you have to look at this as well because if other competitor will be able to manufacture similar type of drug or the same drug but in the gener generic um, condition so you wouldn't be able to put higher margin on your product so and uh, your profit will go down straight away now another thing you have to uh, consider is insurance companies because the majority of patients they don't pay money themselves they pay it through insurance and if the insurance company refuses to pay for this particular drug for whatever reason uh, the sales might go to zero practically because nobody is going to pay for this drug themselves. Okay, so you have to take it in consideration. And of course, if the drug has any side effects which threaten the life of the patients, 
uh, you have to know about it straight away and be very very careful about that because if something like that happens the drug might be discontinued uh, like for, it could be taken from shelves and you need to understand that if this situation happens in order to uh, replace this drug it might take another 10 to 15 years okay and secondly it will cost nearly 800 million dollars so uh, pay attention to that particular so this is additional criteria which you need to take into consideration when you invest in biotech companies on the top of what we already uh, learned during our educational program